Modern slavery is a major issue within the United Kingdom and more needs to be done. We're going to be having a look at this article from Open Democracy in which Sorella Breverman's new UK Border Act is making things a lot worse. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are in the world, this is Regan Elite here. And we're having a look at this article from the Open Democracy, which headline is Potential Modern Slavery Victims Sent Packing as New UK Border Act Bites. Experts blame Suella Braverman's Border Act as stats show that the record number of potential victims are being turned away. So, um, this has been discussed in the past um, in the Houses of Parliament the bill and the damage that it could potentially be done and it seems now it's starting to come to fruition sadly and um, Suella Breverman is showing her real cruelness when it comes to, to dealing with this um, but we need to call out the, the faults of this government everywhere we can but let's dive into this guys <clears throat> so Modern slavery experts have blamed the government's controversial new border law for a sharp drop in the number of potential victims being offered protection. Just 58% of the initial decisions by the Home Office Modern Slavery Protection System, the National Referendum Mechanism, the NRM, were successfully in the first quarter of 2023. According to figures released this month a year ago, the figure was 89%. So, yeah, the number of victims are not coming forward uh, or not getting protection because of austerity, cuts, and then obviously this new Borders Act um, by Suella Breverman is just making things worse for them. Similarly, the number of positive final decisions made later on the process has dropped from 92% in early 2022 to 75% in early 2023. These are the highest rejection rates in the NRM since since at least 2014, the furthest back available data goes. That's despite the fact referrals are increasing. The Home Office received 4,746 referrals for potential victims of modern slavery between January and March. The highest court release since the NRM was established in 2009, while the Modern Slavery Helpline, operated by Charity Unseen, saw 26% more calls in the first quarter of 2023 than in 2022. So it's on the rise. The, the statistics and numbers here are showing that there is an increase when it comes to modern slavery and yet less less are being offered protection why is that why, why are we not helping these people all the numbers are going in one direction says Andrew Wallace the CEO of Unseen they are just another part of evidence basis and that's and that says there's a problem the National and Nationality and Borders Act came into force at the end of January and raised the bar that referrals must clear to succeed, with some saying it placed unreasonable demands on people who have fled modern slavery. Rather than providing a source of hope for victims, the Nationality and Borders Act makes it harder for people to, to access support. Lucy Cinnamonton, a parliamentary officer of Anti-Slavery International, told Open Democracy, raising the bar for evidence. To align with the Nationalities and Borders Act, the statutory guidance used by case officers to, act to assess modern slavery referrals was also updated. One of the key concerns raised about the new guidelines was the amount of extra detail and evidence that a first responder must now provide when making a referral. A person cannot self-render into the NRM. Only designed first responders like the police may apply it on their behalf, where the threshold for a positive and reasonable ground decision used to be suspect suspects but cannot prove under new guidance. A positive decision is now based on objective factors, but surely short of conclusive proof. So, they're, they're essentially, you're just basically saying they're not going to take anyone's word for it. You need more, more. You need more proof to say that you're in a you're in this situation, really, isn't it? Which is ridiculous to say the least. The statutory guidance states that an objective factor is a piece of information or evidence that is based in fact, such as information provided by first responders based on an observative fact, medical or expert reports, and police reports. Robin Phillips uh, of the Human Traffic Foundation told Oakham Democracy, a victim's own testimony alone is no longer sufficient for positive, reasonable ground decisions. We submit requests and they just and they just get knocked back. The evidence threshold around the objective evidence has just kicked up and proven problematic. So it's just like why what 
like every single one should be taken into account um, what is it like how many are actually not true or not modern slavery like like I'd like to know what the percentage would be like out of all the ones they get every year like how many do they find that they actually prove that they're not in in this situation or that they, they don't need help can they provide that I don't think they can this change increases the burden on first responder systems while also requiring a level of physical evidence that often isn't immediately available. The result has been the first responders are now less able to submit a referral that could result in a positive reasonable grounds decision. What we've seen is many more knockbacks of requests for reasonable ground decisions. Andrew Wallace Unseen told Open Democracy. We submit requests, they just get knocked back. The evidence threshold around objective evidence has kicked up and proven problematic as warned it would happen when it was just a bill. Adam Billbrooks of the Migrant Support NGO Carolyn says that they're experiencing a similar response. The Home Office have responded to NRM's referrals with a list of questions, the answers to which are already in the original referral. This delays the decision at the start of support for clients, some of whom are homeless or in critical need of medical treatment. Delays also exaggerate anxiety for our clients who are already worried about their status and how they're going to be able to continue to support their families. Without positive reasonable grounds decision, potential victims are locked out of transformed recovery time and other vile forms of support. This is the ideology of, you know, of destroying communities, of destroying people. And it's pretty, pretty disgusting that less and less support are there for people and to kind of just throw people out when, when they need support. It's, it's a blind eye to them. And attaching strings to that evidence. In 2022, 87% of conclusive ground decisions were positive. That means the, la the large majority of people who were suspected but not proven to be victims of modern slavery had ended up having their status confirmed after they went through the NISF. So 87% of them, that's a high number. So is that really more than, is that, is that a plausible case yet to change these laws? Is it? Really? I don't think so. However, Wallace, that's that the service has seen officer victims during the interim period, like help with gathering evidence, he has seen less use since the Nationality Borders Act came into force, in large part due to less people getting positive, reasonable ground decisions. This implies that some people who are under the guidance that would have eventually found their way into a positive, conclusive ground decision are no longer being allowed, allowed past the first post. <clears throat> We are denying access to support and services that they need that will have a knock-on effect on our ability to prosecute. Yeah. You know, you, 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 these traffickers who are responsible for them are getting, are being allowed, are going to get away with it because of less support for the victims as a result of this law. The higher hurdles don't stop once a person gets at an initial, gets at a, Positive initial decision when gathering evidence for a conclusive ground decision. The new change in guidance is also ask a victim of their legal representative for information to be provided within two weeks. A time frame that didn't exist previously, this further increases the pressure on solicitors or are already few and far between and leaves them potentially unable to gather enough evidence in such a short time frame. Yeah, why do you have to put a time frame on it? This should be done at their own time. Like, they need to be given that time. You know, we're just like, like you've got two weeks to open up. You need to open up within two weeks. Like, no, like, it's like, how many times have I said about human beings with emotional feelings, mental health, and all these kind of things that we don't talk enough about? He also disregards the possibility of trauma victims that may struggle to disclose accurate information immediately. Another new section of the guidance laid out lays out a bad faith disqualification. It excludes a potential victim from the recovery period and support if the case offers suspect statements by the victim or third parties were made in a bad faith. Individuals can also be disqualified as a result of public order violation. This, Simington said, becomes a greater concern when considering that in recent NRM statistics, criminal exploitation was the main form of exploitation. The Nationality and Borders Act is already impacting potential victims of modern slavery just months after it was in being enforced, making it more difficult for potential victims to receive the time and support they need to gather evidence and prove what a first responder suspects, suspects happened to them. And likely as a result will also increase also increasing evidence that less people are willing to engage with the NRC. Exactly. 
it's going to drive people away <clears throat> and it's going to allow more criminals to to get away with it the victims are going to be left to fend for themselves why would they want to come forward when they're going to be where you say okay we well, have to do this and you have with the victims are being put in a situation where they kind of have to jump through hoops in order to get some kind of justice that's there should be no hoops whatsoever for them in this they are victims of a crime and they're being and they're not being supported in any way shape or form here if someone does not consent to the NRM, first responders complete a duty to notify them, notify form instead. During the first quarter of 2023, 1,420 potential victims chose not to enter the NRM, but were recorded by the system through duty of notive, notive forms, the variety forms. One year ago, the figure was 987. So yeah, so already the 20, first quarter of 2023, 1,420 chose not to enter. We are continuing to we are going to continue to see less people entering the NRM. What I said, more and more victims are not going to want to engage with the system, especially if the illegal migration bill exists in its current form. We are denying access to support and services that they need. And this will have a knock-on effect in our ability to prosecute traffickers. The Nationality and Borders Act was only the beginning, with the illegal migration bill making its way through Parliament. Things are only going to get increasingly difficult for potential victims of modern slavery. Before the full extent of the impact of the Nationality and Borders Act is known, the Illegal Migration Bill is making its way through Parliament, which seeks to further restrict access to support for survivors of modern slavery. Philip says, if passed, people who enter the country by irregular means since 7th of March 2023 will not be entitled to support under the NRM and instead will be detained and subject to removal. Basically, will be kicked out of the country. More than 60 charities, MPs and trade unions signed a letter warning the government that victims and survivors of modern slavery will see protections being removed under the Illegal Migration Bill. In reply to their concerns, the Home Office Minister Robert Jenkins said, said that moves to withdraw protections for victims are, are complaint, compliant with international law and that appropriate support and money from removal may be withheld on grounds of public support. He ended his letter with, must, with we must stop the boats. That's, yeah... Yeah, we must stop the boats because that's the most important priority right now, isn't it? He's nothing more than a mouthpiece for the Home Office because the Home Secretary is too scared to face the shadow Home Secretary, isn't she? We are appalled by the government's gleep dismissal for so many experts raising the impact on this bill on survivors of modern slavery. Mia Esselbyn of After Explosion exploitation told open democracy rather than address the very real state scale of trafficking and exploitation in the uk the government has decided to scapegoat and restrict the rights of victims this move to criminalize and deport survivors of trafficking will not only cause immense suffering it will also fail to get to the root of causes of trafficking in the uk yeah it will <sighs> guys um it's another example of people being left to fend for themselves with no support in sight <sighs> more more of a case of why we need a general election of why we need a new a new a new government and a new political party in there um, I'd like to think that labor will will reverse these over time uh, and undo the damage but we're in a situation where these people are in desperate need of help and they're being left to fend for themselves to say this is under international law, I, I just have nothing but the utmost sympathy for all these people who are suffering as a result of, of these new laws. You know, people, you know, people are already suffering as it is, and they're just making it worse. But we have a very, very cruel cool Home Secretary, as as you guys are know. So, guys, what do you think of the article? Let me know down in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching.